very very respected within the culture people who don't like him but he he knew everything about the music everything about the artist he, he made an effort he learned the appropriate languages and everything else like that back then people would be saying how can they support the channel chisel by chisel i've got tops I've got hoodies i've got the dragon ball z tees like the pain and full star tees you lot can support buy some of the merch i'll be able to churn out more content this one i'm just waiting by myself for the, for the moment and i'll bring out more colors please support i mean a and r's are the people who go and scout for it wasn't a and r a and r's people that go and scout for other musicians yeah, to do this yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's an artist, artist and repertoire is what A&R stands for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what an A&R, because for people that don't understand what A&R... Everyone A &R knows what an A&R is. What's an A&R? Artist and repertoire. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> you listen to a song and see if that would be good for the masses. And make money. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that it in a nutshell? Is that it in a nutshell? I mean, it depends. Like, I just want to go to shows and just see, like, oh, yeah, this person would be good for our label and we can make money off them. That's, that's that's a way of looking at it. That's, that's but it, it, yeah, an A&R is, is someone who scouts for talent, helps an artist create music, and you know they can put it out. But I think it's it's a very different thing. It's like what DJs do, what artists do, and then you got someone who oh, you're gonna get me in trouble doing this. I, I didn't come here to do this today. <laughs> yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm listening. I got a lot of A&R friends, isn't it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's it's different. There's some people who got an amazing ear for music, right? Um, and they, they're great at what they do and there's great A&Rs and everything else. But ultimately, I think the way that things have changed over the years, um, the artists are in full control now. It's, it really is. Like, you, you can suggest maybe use this track or that track's better than that track or whatever. I played this track last night, it goes off, this is going to go off. Or you can say, as, D, as a DJ and as a fan of music, mm. you should come with this one first and da 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 but I think I think ultimately it's, it's the artist, and I think there's some great A and R people. I work with a lot of great A and R people, mm. but it's not it's not the same. It's it's not the same. Not every DJ. Some DJs I wouldn't trust with their opinion. Yeah, like <laughs> it just it just is. Is that because you would say that some DJs have not? But you said obviously clearly you're a fan of hip hop. I mean I say yeah, I'm a fan yeah. of music, but I think predominantly I say you're a fan of hip hop. Yeah, predominantly yeah. now. Sometimes people talk about people being culture vultures and sometimes yeah. you find that maybe people who are trying to get into the industry and they make yeah. mistakes because they don't know what actually the essence is of that music and the culture. Now, is it possible to be a culture vulture? For instance, let's look at the DJs, okay? So let's mm. look at hip hop DJs that yeah. are in One Extra and all these other places. Let's yeah. look at Afrobeats DJs. Yeah. Let's look at dancehall DJs. Yeah. Now, without mentioning any names, yeah. um, I think we probably all know who the biggest dancehall DJ is in the UK, but we're not gonna mention any names. Who is it? I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> should, should I mention it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. from what I assume, it's Rodigan, the biggest reggae dancehall. Like, if you're going to put on any big thing and you want to, he's the biggest name. Right. W would you disagree? Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm now, disagreeing. So I've, I've yeah. heard some people have complaints and say, oh, you know, how come a Caucasian guy is the biggest mm. dancehall hip hop mm. DJ? Sorry, not hip hop, the biggest dancehall reggae DJ in mm. the UK. Mm. And I say, is that, <coughs> is that a problem? We talk about Afrobeats. Mm. One could argue, say, the biggest Afrobeats DJ is Net Tizzle. Mm. Okay, mm. Nettozo isn't from Africa. One could argue, does it matter? Mm. And I say, is it possible to be a culture vulture, or is it a fact that we're in the UK and we are only the UK make up ninety percent mm. of the of England? So is it fair to say that they should be the gatekeepers? Because mm. that's the word that people tend to use and say that for hip hop, for instance. At one point, um, I would argue and say that don't want to mention his name, but a DJ who's in a bit of problems at the moment. At one point. Who? <laughs> you went on the line, so this guy's listening to naming names. You went on the line, so you have to say it. I'm trying to protect you. That's why I'm not mentioning Why are you names. protecting me? Because sometimes people don't want their opinions on other people put on the platform. Yeah, but I, wait, what? yo, you can say whatever you want, but I got my opinion. Right? Yo, don't. You, okay. look, I don't need protection, but I appreciate okay. it. But no, I'm, but right. I'm, not, I'm just because sometimes right. I've had people on the show, and yeah. sometimes when you they're a bit like, oh, can you cut that out? So I'm just trying to be a bit mindful. Okay, so let's we can when just talk straight that, then. By the way. So, for instance, I would say that. Um, funny thing is that. When it comes to people who don't know you, don't realise mm. how immersed in hip-hop you are. Mm. So because maybe you're not seen as the poster boy mm. of it, people don't realise all the work <clears> that you've done mm. when it comes to hip-hop. It's just because maybe um, somebody's 
maybe on, I don't know, BBC Radio 1 mm. as a DJ. So somebody mm. would think they're the biggest or they've got most of mm. the connection and respected the most. Mm. Whereas you might be respected the most in hip-hop. Where someone might say... Right, you're changing the question. Let's keep it to what you were okay. saying first. So we're talking about culture vultures, then we'll go yeah, back yeah, to yeah. that. So for instance, you've got someone like, one would argue that at one point... All right, but, but just to be clear, you're talking about the concepts of culture vultures. And then you're talking about DJs that are from different heritages and different yes. ways. Okay. Yes. Like, I just... Yes. Yeah. So, for instance, right. one would argue and say, we always have this conversation about gatekeepers, and one could argue yeah. that at one point, Tim Westwood could be seen as probably mm. one of the biggest faces of hip-hop, mm. and he might have been the gatekeeper. So, rappers mm. may want to go on Westwood show so mm. that they can rap on there because it will be brought out to the world. Mm. One could argue that Charlie Slough at one point could mm. say that he was the, the gatekeeper. Now, both of these guys are English, British mm. guys, and one could argue and say <coughs> that hip-hop maybe is technically started from the Bronx, I'm assuming, I think it was, Yeah. one could yeah. argue. And I yeah. think it was started by Jamaicans, by Jamaicans who yeah. were rapping and emceeing on a microphone. However, time has transpired and everyone loves mm. hip hop. Do you, Semtex, see anything wrong with maybe the face of hip hop DJ being a Caucasian? Him being the gatekeeper, assuming they were the gatekeepers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what, <laughs> right? First and foremost, I think it's about what's in your heart. The batteries are charged fully, yeah? So nothing's going to cut out. So just... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't done a leg cross. He's getting Sorry. serious now. <laughs> He's getting yes. serious now. I brought, you know, I brought the the conversation you conversation with you because I listened to your podcast. Right. I've also had yeah, the yeah. conversation. I heard you. You yeah. haven't mentioned it, but I've always wanted to have a conversation with you directly because I see you as one of the legends in hip-hop. It's Thank just you. that yeah. people don't... You're not the poster <laughs> boy. But yeah. anyone who knows about hip hop or knows who's respected I'll be when it to, comes I'll be, to hip hop. So much shows you DJ over years. Like well, people don't right? realize yeah. it's you. You're just like, not the post about it. But mm. anyone who talks about hip hop DJing mm. mentions you. Yeah. Mm. It's just that you're just not the plaster faced boy of it. Mm. I don't know if that is if, that good or bad. Um, the, the bad thing one, one could argue and say, are you being marginalized or are people just preferring other people? But when it comes to the essence okay, of court, okay, who's marginalizing me? Um, I think sometimes we want the accolades. No, put the camera back on him. No, I think sometimes we like. <laughs> think, for instance, it, sometimes yeah. we like the accolades. We want to be seen. Whereas, Who? I think, I think, come on, I think we like to. Okay, I'm uh, saying, I'm worry, generalizing. He, he's yeah. Nigerian Yoruba. No, they but like I mean, no, 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 because yeah, yeah. yeah. if someone, if someone talked about hip hop DJs and gatekeepers, hmm. in the, let's talk into the layman. Okay, hmm. they probably wouldn't mention your name before hmm. the other names I've mentioned, hmm. if that makes sense. But the core. As in what you call the non-casuals right. would mention you. I mean, I, that's you saying that. That's yeah, it's just my opinion. Yeah, this yeah, could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying, that's what I'm saying that yeah. when talking about the faces of these genres of music, do you see inherently a problem when people would refer to maybe Westwood or Sloth as the faces of hip-hop or the gatekeepers for hip-hop in the UK? All right, let me answer it like this. I think the most important thing is, is what's in the heart, right? This isn't a fluffy diplomatic answer. I'm saying, what's in your heart, right? If you're committed to the culture, if you're here for the culture first and foremost, and if you're putting on artists, and if you're taking it somewhere else, and if you're taking the parameters of somewhere else, I don't think it matters what race or whatever you are, because mm -hmm. you could, you know, with Neptizzle, for instance, who works harder than him? He's deep in Ghana as well, boy. And Tell Apple, me, who works yeah. harder? Mm. No, not, mm. no, no. I, I need, I'm, I need I, the names. I don't, I, don't the, I don't know the answer to that. Right. Because okay. I don't wait, know, so wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. Right. So you, you know, with Neptizzle, if you, you can't say who goes harder than Neptizzle mm -hmm. for that culture and that sound, mm -hmm. right? Is it a problem that he's doing it? Shouldn't we be thankful that he's doing it? But I wonder if on the flip side, <clears> let's <throat> say, for instance, let's say I'm going to use Bangra, for instance. You say you said mm. DJ Bangra. I no, no, I used to do Bangra uh, parties. Bangra parties. I've so. never DJ Bangra. Okay. Yeah. I, w I would struggle to believe that it would be possible for someone who wasn't of that ethnicity or heritage to be the poster boy or face or the gatekeeper of that genre of music. I don't think it would happen. I mean, there was a white guy from a DJ collective called Punjabi Hit Squad who went on to run Asian Network. Mm -hmm. Mark mm. Stripple, very, very respected within the culture. Mm. It's people who don't like him, mm -hmm. but he, he, could, he, he knew everything about the music, everything about the artist. He, he made an effort. He learned the appropriate languages and everything else. Mm -hmm. Like, 
that a bad thing? You give me another angle to see it at. No, no, no. You have. Is it a bad thing? It's not. Is it another angle? Is it a bad thing that someone is immersed in the culture, has learned everything, studied it, and is committed to it, and committed and shows respect and, and committed and to pushing it further? I would Helping. Say, is, isn't that an ally? I, w- I would say it's not a bad thing. Is it an ally? It's very rare that I'm. I don't want to be intellectually dishonest. I want to be <laughs> honest. And you know, you, and you know, going back to what you said about Net Tizzle, mm-hmm. he's been playing the Afrobeats before it was cool in the the whole scene. I, d- I don't. So think I, about think about think about like years <laughs> ago, like when you go to like Riggs back before. Mm-hmm. He was one of the few few guys that used to play it before it became trendy. Okay. All right, here's another way of looking at it. Who is it? Who is it that decides whether an artist or a DJ is big? Who decides that? The culture, the people. The culture saying up still. So you yeah. take it over the culture. And that's, and that's what I was going to say. I think, and I don't like to miss my words. And I think when it comes to the culture, I don't know whether it's a good or bad thing that we're so inviting and welcoming. We're very accommodating. We invite everybody in. And you know. Hold on, all right, all right. Neptiza, were you invited? Did you get an official invite, say, welcome to Afrobeats? You are now permitted to DJ. Here's your visa. Here's your passport. Yes, from bookings. From people booking them. No, no did, did he get that? Yeah, from the bookings. All right, so <laughs> from who, the, from who booked booking. him then? Who, deci- the who decided Neptizzle is that guy to book? The people. Right, so somebody said... Neptizzle is committed to music, he's credible, he's dope at what he does. We need to put him on the flyer. Um, Neptizzle, you're booked. Is the, wait, is the, cult inv- is the culture inviting him? Yes. Right, okay, hold on. But then aren't you exploiting him? Because then it's like, well, yes, no, wait, right. wait, wait, wait. Right. They are. We're going to pay you, we're inviting you to DJ this event because we think you're great and we respect you and everything else. But you're a vulture as well, you know, because, you know, boy, you're not from... Come on, man. I think there's a slight novelty. So I think when what I find is that when other people, and I use the word other people, do things, yeah. for instance, which are not technically seen as something that's within the culture. So for instance, yeah. when someone goes on stage and maybe it's a big concert and they see, and I don't know what country sometimes, I don't want to mention it because I don't want to get it wrong, but seeing that yeah. Tizzle go on stage, they're yeah. going to look at him and be like, this guy's going to play Afrobeats. Yeah. So when they see him playing Afrobeats, it's like, Rotted. This brother can play, and he can play good. Well, yeah. like, same with Rodigan. Somebody yeah. will see Rodigan walk on stage and be like, "Who is this old?" And then he's dropping some bangers. Yeah. So I don't know whether part of it is that novelty, where it's, and I don't. I'm not using the ab saying the other side. Let's like, say I'm not using capitalists, but I mean right. someone who's not. Okay. Okay. Who are the promoters that book Neptizzle? Um, I would argue and say that they're probably black promoters. Okay. Where from? Um, depending on where they are, I'll say, uh, from, uh, yeah, uh, no, yeah. it depends who the promoter is. I'll say probably maybe West African. Maybe. Okay, okay. Who's his manager? Um, I'm gonna assume that it's probably someone who's going to be black. I'm assuming. I don't right. know. Okay, mm. okay. Who pays to see him? Um, all the, the the promoter and the people that come to see him, the okay. customers. So where's where's this vulturing happening? Where where is this occurring? At what, what point what, is what this a conversation? This I, I, I struggle to say that. And once again, I'm not saying this because <laughs> these people are not good teachers or not be doing it. What I'm trying mm. to say is that when I look within this and I look outside of it, I think one would struggle to see someone else have their music and for for instance someone else to be the face of it. I know you mentioned the Punjabi Hit Punjabi squad. hit squad, yeah. Mark Strippel. Okay, yeah. so, um, and why I mention that is because that rapper called Little Nas X, when he brought out that song called um, Old Country, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old. all of the country music people rebelled. That's, said, a, to- that's a totally different thing. No, no, because no, they, no, 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 no. They, didn't no want him in their, they, didn't, they didn't want him inside their culture. You're not, you're not, you can't get a number one and call it country music, call it something else. They didn't want him being the yeah, number that, one seller. That, no, 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 no. You're, 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 that's, we're that. talking about, let, can we talk about DJs first? We're talking about DJs. But it's, no, isn't, no, isn't, no. It, isn't All right, we're talking, we're talking about DJs who are spearheading a culture year in, year out, mm-hmm. playing week in, week out, committed to the art form, looking for new music, screaming loud, yeah, this artist is dope, we mm-hmm. should support them. That's very different to Little Nas X doing a track which challenges what society thinks. Totally different conversations. But their argument it's totally was different country conversations. Music. Those arguments with country music. That they yeah, but we, we, we can music. talk about it in a separate conversation. Okay, no, but so we're talking about DJs and the mm-hmm. concepts of vultures, right? Mm-hmm. So my view on it is um, 
yo, if 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 they're putting in the work, if they're advancing the culture and their hearts in it, doesn't matter. Am I per- add, per- a sick DJ, by the way. Might I just add that. <laughs> That's like a backhanded <laughs> compliment. No, 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 no. But everyone knows the noise I say. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I say it all the time. Yeah, yeah. He says it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Neptune right, so. will shut down your rave. All right. No, no, no. no, no. All right. So, <laughs> Nick so, Tizzle will shut down your so, rave. So, is how can he be considered to be a vulture? No, I, no, no. I, the topic is culture vulture. Right. Some, I know, but how could he be? How could he possibly considered to be a vulture? Um, how? Maybe because when one talks about Afrobeats, you'd probably hope that maybe it was a black guy who was the biggest Afrobeats DJ. Okay, so the people should make that happen. The culture should make that happen. The promoters should actively make that happen. And I agree. And someone should come along and work harder and be a thousand times more committed than that Tizzle and make that happen. But in the meantime, mm-hmm. if that isn't there, should Net Tizzle not do it? No, and the reason why he should do it is because... <laughs> the, 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 the gatekeeping for it and this is why I like the conversation is down to us who said he's a gatekeeper no no when I say gatekeeper I say like yeah. to open the door to let someone in it's, it's us that like, allow anyone for instance to have a platform so anyone yeah. that has 25,000 followers people get what yeah. argue and say who gave them a platform well all you lot that, oh, yeah, <laughs> that have followed this person has given them a platform that's given them to speak in the same way you've got how many subscribers now you've yeah. got 10,000 plus right. who let you in no one mm-hmm it's, it's, bro, it's not that. But who's kept you there? The people. All right. But, <laughs> no, but, but, but what I'm saying is, all right, so is Joe Rogan saying, yo, man, my man's a vulture, like, coming into this podcast space unannounced. We didn't invite him in. It's, come on, man. You know what? You know what? You know what? Like, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be very f-ing ignorant. And I want that. I want, I want that. I do not I want the real set. I do not give a f- what anybody thinks about me, what I do, or whatever. I know I'm f-ing dope or what I do. I know I'm great and that's it i know i'm committed and i'll do i do everything with integrity and sincerity right mm-hmm. I, I play the sickest music i play what i see as moments that build in a club i, mm-hmm. I put together dope radio shows I, I i'm reflective of the culture of hip-hop mm-hmm. i'll support and play uk rap uk drill us rap every single style you know what that's that's one thing uh what made me even back in the day, let's say like I've gone to like concerts and notice <clears throat> when you're playing, you know, like over here, cool, yep. a lot of DJs are scared to play, I call it risky tunes, where I'll give you an example, we, me and uh, one of our friends, Marvin, we were in Atlanta right. recently right. and I was just like in the club and I'm listening, 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 listening. And one of my friends was like from out there and he was like, mm. I'm surprised you know all these songs very well. Yeah. And I said to him, why? Because you've been to London and the DJs don't play certain tunes. And mm. he was like, yeah. And I said to him, because we travel a lot. Yeah. We, we start to pick up on everything where we mm. go. And out there, you see, like, you see like DJs play certain tunes that might have just dropped like a few days ago. Mm. But here, people are scared to play in the club because they don't know the crowd. Mm. But I've been to concerts. I've heard you play certain tunes. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I swear that just only just came out yeah, yeah, yeah. recently. And yeah. yeah. The crowd is moving, yeah, 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 but yeah. it goes down to that's why I asked you earlier on. Yeah. Is a DJ and an A and R, yeah, because you have to have a kind of a skill to know that, <coughs> regardless of this tune has a boss out here, yeah, you know that that beat once it hits the crowd, yeah, no one's gonna stand still, mm. and that's a skill in itself. Like that's why I asked the DJs yeah. and A and R's quite similar. I, th- I think I think it's I think it's like I think I think. Yeah, there's things where that does work and yeah. that, that does help. There's things where I've achieved and done certain things because my knowledge of being a DJ and my understanding of music. Mm. But because I've been on radio for 20 years and tearing down shows, it doesn't mean to say that everyone's going to listen to you. Because mm. I've consistently, year in, year out, tour at clubs, tour at festivals, doesn't mean to say that everyone's going to listen to you. Mm. Like, there's different approaches from different people and different considerations that go into that so it's not always just like smooth sailing like that and also you can be a dj put together a track and you just totally miss the mark have just you ever thought about quitting have you ever thought about throwing in the bag this negative shit, no i'm just asking i know but no, you're no, 20 years know, in. We're, we're here to talk great about years. we're here Nine to two. talk about greatness and then we're talking about vulturism and yeah because i'll criticism. tell you why i'll tell you why because as i said i see you maybe i see you as one of the cemented 
hip hop DJ. So yeah. when I'm asking you these questions, the reason why is because but why, why can't you do it as a different way? The question, like, Go on. Sam, how far are you gonna take this? That's more positive, how far right? Are you take this? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's no, a communication no, degree. No, no, yeah. no. no, 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 no all right, all right, all right, all right. The word is yo. Stop it, yo. For the clip, for the clip, yeah. What's a better question? Have you ever considered quitting, or how far are you gonna take what you do? Which is the better question? Open and close questions. Mm. But he doesn't no, no, no but, but one's negative, okay. one's positive. What's the best way of me asking? Have you ever thought about throwing the towel in or stopping? That's so f negative. It's not negative, like, though. <laughs> okay. So, I, I thought, have you ever thought about the podcast? All right. Have you ever thought about stopping the podcast? Yeah, a few Be months honest, ago, remember, I took, right. I took a break. Right. That's the question. Right. I took a three week break. Right. Have, you, have you ever thought about losing? Um, have I ever thought about losing? Yeah, I have. I don't, I don't think like that. No, no, I have. I, know, I do what I love. And but, the, but the fire in my belly keeps me going. Yeah, because you do what you love, right? Yeah. Right, okay. But remember, you're, remember, once again, remember, you've been in this game for a long time, which means yeah, that yeah, yeah. because you're a student of the game and you love it so much, yeah, that's yeah. Not even, it's not even crossed your mind. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's so, all. So, so why, why ask it then? Like, you, why, you just, you just answered the question. The why are you going to ask it? You, you might think they're, they're, they're what? They're to arouse something inside you, but you've got to remember that. It's provocative. People look at you. Maybe you don't see how people see you. And as I said, I see you as one of those pinnacles in the game. So when I ask you certain Thank questions, you. it's not for me to be um, divisive. It's for me I know, to... Need, all right, all right, all right. Let me, let me just break something down. Mm -hmm. I can't do negative. I mm -hmm. can't. Like, I've never done negative thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I'm just not wired like that, right? I'm infinitely positive. Mm -hmm. So, like, we're here having a good talk. <laughs> it's just like these things come out of the blue. And I get it, I get it, I, you mm -hmm. know. But, yeah, man, like... How far do you want to take this is a better question than I'd rather be asked than have you ever thought about quitting? Which I've never thought about. I've never thought about mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. like, like that. I don't yeah. understand that concept. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Like, and, um, and it's like I said, I just think in life, you, you've got to do what your calling is and go all out. And that's all I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Just, and things have changed. Technology changes. We had COVID and the music changes and everything else and all of that. But I love it as much as when I first started. I'm working as hard as when I first started in different capacities. But yeah, I love it more than ever. 